For around $500, it's now possible to pick up a Windows 10 laptop powerful enough for use at home, school, or work. Likewise, it's also easy to find full-featured Chromebooks and hybrid systems that give you both laptop and tablet functionality in one device for as little as $300. You should be prepared to compromise, however. You might find a powerful $500 laptop with a roomy 15-inch screen, but it'll probably have a flimsy keyboard and touchpad. Likewise, you could buy an impeccably made Ultra Portable that uses an underpowered CPU and a hard drive instead of a solid state drive to achieve its low price. As a result, the best way to shop for a laptop is to make a list of features you want in order from most to least important, and be okay with the fact that you're probably not going to find a single machine with all of them. You'll want to determine which ones matter to you most and concentrate on getting those. First, check out the CPU. Intel's Atom, Celeron, and Pentium processors power most of the under $400 laptop set. Years ago, these were painfully slow, but now, operating systems like Windows 10 and Chrome OS are a bit more reasonable with their processing demands, and the newest generations of these chips themselves are more efficient. So, a Celeron or Pentium-powered laptop can support most of your web browsing and basic productivity needs without feeling sluggish. On the other hand, if you open many browser tabs at once, frequently stream online video, or often switch back and forth between apps, it's worth insisting on an Intel Core i3 or Core i5 processor. The same goes for memory. These days, you'll find at least 4 gigabytes of memory in even the cheapest laptops. But it's worth bumping that up to 8 gigabytes if you expect to have more than one app or browser tab open at a time. At this point, if you've decided to splurge on 8 gigabytes of memory and an Intel Core CPU, it's time to consider compromises on some other features. Start with the screen. Many inexpensive laptops that have decent processing muscle offer a lower than full HD resolution of 1366 by 768 pixels. It will look a bit grainy, but it's better than enduring long waits for web pages to load or PowerPoint presentations to open. That said, if you'll be using your machine for enjoying movies or working with photos, you'll want to go with a full HD screen known as 1080p or 1920 by 1080 pixels and sacrifice on some other component. Some models offer touch-enabled full HD screens, if you're willing to skimp on the memory and CPU. One thing to note is that if you're looking at a 2-in-1 machine that rotates or detaches to become a tablet, by nature it will have a touch screen. Next up, storage! If you've decided to go with a Pentium or Celeron processor and 4 gigabytes of memory, avoid spinning hard drives at all costs. Instead, choose a model with an SSD, which will make your computing experience feel much snappier, though it will be at the expense of less storage space. Many cheap laptops offer 128 gigabyte SSDs for about the same price as ones with 500 gigabyte hard drives. As for the connectivity on your budget laptop, machines like these will almost always come with at least one USB 3.0 port and possibly a USB 2.0 port or two. You may also get an SD card slot for offloading photos from your digital camera. Finally, at prices below $500, it's definitely worth your time to try out the laptop in a showroom to gauge its build quality. Is the touchpad responsive? Does the keyboard bend in the middle when you type? These issues are far more likely to crop up on budget machines than they are on sleek $1,000 ultra portables. But don't worry, if you're on a strict budget, you can still find PCs that will offer you enough performance to tackle your day-to-day -day tasks without a stutter. Check out PCMag.com for our most recent list of the best budget laptops we've tested.